Hello everybody, Reggie Time here again with the second instalment of the 30R Snap Trilogy on Triple Eight. I hope you enjoyed the first video. This is the second video, pretty much the same as the first in terms of um, the pool player pool. Nothing much changes in terms of that, but um, who knows what's going to happen with the play itself. Um, before we get into it, just like to remind you guys that I am currently recruiting new students. Um, my rates are variable depending on how many sessions um, that anyone takes with me and if you're a, basically a losing player or a new player and would like some help with your game please get in touch if you're already a break even or better player at 10 and a lot above my work isn't really aimed at you and maybe you'd be better enjoying the channel but maybe looking for someone else to to give you some coaching i do my best work with people with mental game issues people who are new to the game and people who just Whatever they do, these can't seem to win at poker. Um, that's where we aim ourselves, and that's what we hope to help. That's where we hope to help. Um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that nonsense, and enjoy the video. Here we go, straight into the action with a king queen, with a small pair that we're not going to play, and with two aces that I'm thinking about putting some more money in the pot with. Given that we saw Wayne on the last video, like, caught 6.2x with who knows what, we'll, um, we almost donked out there. We almost donked out by mistake there. We may as well, because he just snap checked back. Now we're just going to lead out with what we assume is almost certainly the best hand. And now maybe isn't the best hand. Whether to block the king queen, check something it. Block it. Maybe queen jack calls. There's trivial fold. Not even worth thinking about, just get it blocked. Do I want to triple battle with my no flush draw? No, I think we'll take the free one. We might even win with the SI here. If he bets I'm tempted to call, we do beat some counterfeited hands with that we've counterfeited. It's certainly gonna raise with the two aces. Really tempted to call here with the ace deuce. <laughs> don't know anything about this player. Does he do it with stuff? Well, we don't know. What I'm thinking is, does he do this with stuff like pocket eights, pocket sevens, queen ten, queen jack? I think you can have like tons of bluffs here. Boom. He did have one. God knows what he called the flop with 10 8 with, but we like that. We do like a nice hero call now and then. Not saying that was a particularly difficult one to make, but we like it. Just like so many straight draws missed. I didn't expect him to have the 10 8 in his range, but so many straight draws missed. Small, small pairs counterfeited. Worse flush draws. Enough going on there for us to. I maybe mean I don't think that's a slow roll, but um, maybe we nip rolled them a bit there. <laughs> Never mind. It's not the best of hands to call with because we block flush draws so much, but there's just so many other things he could have had, not including flush draws. I think it's fine. I 
How many players are in the lobby now? 22. Who knows, we might even get three videos in the pipe out of one session. That would be sweet. That would be sweet. Normally small pairs aren't my thing for opening. Usually because when we're playing in aggressive games we get threed up way too much, but we're not playing in an aggressive pool right now, so I think we can absolutely open them all and just look to pretty pretty much no set, no bet. But in like more aggressive pools, if I'm playing like twenty five and no fast fold not remotely interested in opening pocket three so early on middle position we just get three bet like overall by the field around 20 percent of the time and it's just like fuck you don't like getting three bet around 20 percent of the time don't mind getting three bet to this size we can handle this size three bet me this size all day long i don't care he's just Little nit fuck with fold the ace queen to him. Straight flush draw. We have a straight flush draw in progress. Oh, no, not anymore. Not anymore. I thought we had a straight flush draw in progress. Then he decided to just bet three times a pot and spoil our lives. The real gambler in me wants to jam here. We're not going to jam, by the way, but the real gambler in me wants to jam here. I mean, we can get caught by like, more on today's higher reasonable amount, I guess. <laughs> not do it. Oh, I wanted to. Let me know in the chat there how many of you guys would just say fuck you and jam your straight flush draw when he just like three X pots it. Let me know. I'm like, mad for even thinking about it. Because I was genuinely thinking about it. I knew it wasn't right or didn't feel like it was right but at the same time I was thinking well how wrong can it be if we have a straight flush draw? If we're not drawing dead and we've probably got reasonable equity. Let me know what you think. Lots of fish around. Call with the jack green the bottom. A little bit loose, but probably okay. Against fish. Again, it wouldn't be something I'd be doing in a tough game, but we're not playing in a tough game right now. You take my direct odds here to try and hit my straight on my flush. Double barrels are pretty likely he has an ace. Come on, King Fours. Piss I'll get off the pot, lad. Oh, lass. About once, where it's just tired on bear, a little bit apprehensive about doing so, but it's not the best of boards for us. It kind of hits limp fishes like limp core image. In fact, no, we're not going to bet. I think it just hits fishes limp core image way too hard. Stab hit with the Jack Queen. Try and take it down. We fail to take it down. 
check back to it and maybe bet river if he checks to us a third time let me go for some value here with my tender make a bigish bet here maybe we get him up an eight maybe do not like that flop if he checks the second turn though, we will bet the turn maybe not now we've paid that six maybe we'll just be happy with a little bit of showdown value or maybe we'll just fall to a pot size bet One of the like compliments I get from people who watch my videos or people who have sweated me in the past or just know me in general um, is that how like, pragmatic I am, how calm I am when, when things aren't going right. And um, it's undoubtedly one of my biggest strengths as a poker player. Um, Poker pisses everyone off on a daily basis. It pisses it all off on a daily basis. Things happen in poker that piss us off. What we can't allow to happen is for those emotions to take control of our game and affect the way we play. You've just got to get on with it. You're going to see a lot of bullshit. You've got to cope with the fact you're going to see a lot of bullshit. And you just... It's just its just the way it is sometimes. It's, you, know, you, you walk through a minefield, you know, because you like taking that risk. You've got to accept that you might sometimes get your fucking leg blown off. Um, it's the same with poker. You're playing poker against like players that are better than you, players that are worse than you, just outright fish. Um, you've got to accept that sometimes things aren't going to work out the way you want them to. And if you see your ass over them, that's fine. But if you see your ass over them and then start subsequently play like a prick, then that's not fine. And that's something that's absolutely within your control that lots of people do struggle to control. Um, I used to struggle to control it. Now I'm possibly one of the most chilled out poker players around, I would imagine, of the players I know. You've only got to look at all like, the fucking hate on the forums and the and the spite and the bile and what have you um, to know that there's lots of players out there that just aren't handling the game, not handling the variance, not handling the... the break even stretches the down swings they're not handling any of it if they don't win if they're not winning they're just it's everyone else's fault it's not theirs and they're not handling it and it's it's just really poor preparation on their part really poor mental game preparation and um, it's not the hardest thing in the world to overcome but um, it's not the easiest either jacks it cost us a stack in the last session it won't cost us one well it might cost us one this session because this guy doesn't have a full stack so we have a pair and a good shot and we are getting just about four to one i think we're behind but I think we can call here and play some rivers. Let me check something this river. We're not going to bet. I think you can have a, quite a lot of like missed straight draws and things. Um, you can certainly have some queen tens and shit that he's been playing quite passively um good chance we're gonna call if he bets King seven seems like an interesting hand to turn into a bluff there when he has some showdown value, but whatever, we'll take it. I 
I'm a bit of a station when draws me. A bit of a station. We talked earlier about how maybe I can't remember this video now. Our last video um, <clears throat> about how some of the folds I make might make some of you guys take your hair out. Be thinking of such a nit, but it doesn't make the same folding all the time. If I think there's a good reason to call, then I will do it. But if there's if the only reason I want to call is well, you know. I don't want, well, you know what I mean, when you got the hands when you can't really think of too many hands that you're beating, but you fucking call anyway. I don't do that. If I can't think of many hands I'm beating, I tend not to call. But if I can look at a board and think, well, there's lots of like different draws out there that I've missed, then, then we can make a call. That's typically how I operate. I need to be, a th I don't have to name the hands I can beat. I'm not saying that, right, let's name all these different combos and count them up. Um, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just it's just kind of a rough estimate of yet yeah, on this board he can have lots of draws that I've missed there for I call and on other boards that like well I don't really know what he can have got to the river with that's beating that's that I'm beating. So I make the fall. That's kind of how it works with me and it's how I help people talk through things when they're saying, Should I call this river? And we'll have a session we can spend five minutes or more just saying, Well tell me what you're beating. Give me some hands and they'll they'll come out with some random hand I'm like well how does that hand get to the river how does this hand get to the river you know this you expect this hand to have called like two bets or whatever um and get to the river that way there's like lots of things I like going on I love those types of conversations um they're really interesting it gives me a good insight into what maybe some weaker players are thinking and it hopefully gives the players that are paying me for advice a good idea of what some stronger players are thinking and that should have been a raise with the A7. I was too busy singing my own praises. I'm going to flip the tiny pot on table two. Well, if you are trying to like work on your game and try to find out like, when should we call rivers when shouldn't we call rivers um just get into the practice of if you're not sure if you've got a bluff catcher which like the jacks were there on the pocket with the queen x and the the ace two was a bluff catcher on the king king nine nine board you gotta start thinking so right if i'm catching a bluff what credible bluffs can i put out? what hands can he realistically have that make me then that allow me to to make this call and if you can genuinely put some hands in his range that you think you can beat and they're of a reasonable portion to his value range. So for example, if someone's better pot size better and you think, well, he's got maybe 20 value bets here and, and 11 bluffs or whatever, then you can just call the river when he bets pot, no problem. But then um, you've got to at least try and put some thought into it and be realistic with the type of hands he can have. You can't just say, oh, you can have King Queen here if he's like check called twice on a deuce, deuce, four, seven board. Because you probably can't have King Queen there too often. So you, you've got to put realistic like hands they can have that now that are now bluffing. Hmm. Probably going to fold the river if he barrels and we don't improve, but I think we have to call one more time. Same hand. Which we'll take. So he's check back flop called turn his hand range to me looks like king x and under pairs to the queen and then some draws but we block a lot of his draws um, and I think it's just too likely he can have a king or maybe even a weak queen if he's bad so I think we'll just give up in this spot
field size is shrinking again we're down to 19 on 19 minutes please just let us limp the video to at least a 40 minute episode before the games die This is a pretty loose open with the 9-7, but what the fuck is this dude doing? Min bet over bet, you absolute legend. Now we've been duly punished for the loose open with the Safe flop for us to take a C bet here with the ace jack. Gonna be babbling any ten or higher. Or just taking it down there and then. Which is even better. Although babbling is fun. Don't expect to get squeezed by this guy too often, so we'll try and see a flop with the king jack off. And we flop a reasonable draw. You see, I'm doing. Oh, that was a mistake. I misread my hand. There. I thought it is five suited. Um, I'm doing a lot more. I'm playing a lot more passively pre-flop in these games, um, which I'm usually ever want to do when I'm playing against players that I think have a reasonable edge against. I'm not that in that much of a rush to like three bet bluff pre-flop. Much more inclined to want to see plenty of flops. And hopefully maximise my protect my edge. Yeah, given we got a pair and a good shot. Against some players, I will call this guy such a fucking it will just fold. And it's willing to block this river. Okay, I think he's just going to check back an ace a lot, which we don't want him to do. We could bet fold here, I think. If he's got a queen or a king of hearts, he's probably going to raise. If he doesn't, he's just going to call or fold. But I think he's just going to check back so often when we have the best hand that. That is one massive raise. And we can safely fold versus. I think our line's sound there. So if he does just have an ace, he's going to check back like pretty much 100% of the time or close to or at least he should um, so we don't really get any there's not much value in checking in terms of like bluff catching um, or catching someone's value betting too thinly so I think the leading out's correct I just don't think the spot is ever going to bluff raise there I think when he raises he just has the nuts or the second nuts probably just has the nuts Seems like a good flop on table one. Didn't. But it materialized nicely in that we made our hand on the turn, but it didn't develop nicely given that we didn't get any more fucking value for it. Never mind. We've had an open and, and a three bet. We could have pitched the eights. 
as James Halifax can be somewhat weirdly bad aggressive so we're not going to be stabbing total there against them Stab the eight nine in a pretty heavy multi wave pot. Sometimes you just got to wave the white flag, and this is one of those times. three players now. Good place is booming. Absolutely booming. Again, pretty weak defend, but we're playing in pretty soft games, so we're going to want to try and see flops with pretty stuff. Two decisions here in a row. This is an easy call, so we'd get that one out of the way first. We can squeeze fold with the ace jack of clubs, or we can just call. Let's give it a squeeze in. And then versus this three bet that we can try and see a flop in what's hopefully going to be a multi way pot and just try and smash it out of the pack. We're going to let the jack go on the turn over here. We do not flop a set. Do not hit in a heavy multi way pot. Um, there's some rather disappointing events going on here. I mean, there's nothing we can do with this ace jack. The pot's fucking huge, and we just don't have anything. So, sadly, we just need to just give up. Queen and ten nine. We will be all over the place. Not committed for that call against this little fucker either, but I've made it now, so there we are. to be doing that please fold dance again that's just not a good turn card to barrel up is it just not a good barrel card did not want to load up for the last barrel did not want to load it up it's gonna give up what the f right no i the flush draw sorry for a second there i thought i've been floated by just ace high i take it back I take it all back. We bluff with my deuces here against Flacky. You know, if we're going to bluff, we're going to bluff hard. Calls, which is in. Incredibly disappointed because that means he has showdown value 
and I don't want to try and make people fall short down value on dry boards so we took our shot we missed we retreat and we'll stick to the plan of retreating Okay, then Flacky. That is one ambitious call on the flop. I mean, I get that we don't rep much, but you've got Jack High, you've got Queen High, sir. If you've got Ace High or something there, or Pocket Pair, I get massively on board with you calling. Just calling with the Jack Queen High. <laughs> doesn't make sense to me interesting Stack size this little cunt's got before you defend against him. I mean, he does seem to be like a bit more aggressive now. Perhaps we would just start just fucking pushing back at him a little bit because he has been getting in our face a reasonable amount tonight. I'm not in love with my ace nine in a multi way pot. If Jungsten Cheng bets again, then Lunaticas calls. I think we'll get out of the way. I don't buy dumb bets on pair boards. I don't buy what they're trying to sell me. I just don't buy it. 10 6, we have a good shot. Bang, severed. Fuck you. Severed. Fuck you. Never give us another fucking card. Twenty eight in the pool now. Twenty eight. Absolutely fucking bouncing. We might get the third video in the pipe. All from one session. Three videos from one session. Fucking phenomenal stuff. Phenomenal. Isn't phenomenal is he's never making a fucking hand. That isn't phenomenal. We've had aces about a zillion times. And we haven't made a fucking cent with him yet, hardly. Oh, we have flopped top set again, which is not unpleasant. This is Flacky who makes some rather dubious calls, so hopefully he'll make another one here. <laughs> he'll make a dubious call. He's meant to raise. We like that, Flacky. We like it. We like that nine as well of diamonds on the table. Three. We don't like that flack is just checked. So we don't like. Fuck you, flacky. Flack off. And you're from Flacky. Flacky in Germany. Who's going to absolutely... Well, by the time you watch this video, it'll have gone. So I'm going to make a prediction. 
is from Germany who will have absolutely fucking come to England at football on Friday the 10th of November. I'm making this video on, well, it's Friday, but they're playing today. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning on Friday the 10th. England played Germany tonight. Don't even know where it's at. Don't give a fuck where it's at. Germany will win. And they will win handsomely because England are fucking bobbins at football. Need to call this small forbet. Um, and now just hope he doesn't have pocket aces. And if he does, he's going to win 92 more big blinds. And I'm just going to get owned by another check raiser here and just pay the fuck off anyway. That's what's about to happen, I think. Oh, I. We just fucked by aces full. Aces full has got us by the fucking bollocks. And we're going to pay him right off. Because he might just have ace king. You just never know. You just never know. Oh, he didn't have aces full. How wonderful. I massively enjoy squeezing here too. Seventeen big blinds, given that the preflop raise has been pretty big. It's been three callers. If we get all four callers, we're just gonna probably open jam the flop. Right, so let's see what's going on here. We've got an SPR of two point five effective. So all the money's going in. It's a matter of how. I'm just going to go in by me C betting. And jamming turns. Or oh, just C betting calling it off. Seems like a pretty good river on table. One as well. We'll be looking to get called by here. Downsize right down just to get calls from all these like 7x or whatever. Who knows what? Well, I think the king's gonna get us way too many folds if we bomb. So he's sized right down and just hope he finds a call with something. Maybe we could have got even smaller, maybe quarter pot. Have to see. All oh, right, have to see. I thought he was trying to tell me what his hand was. He just has to see. I don't blame you, sir. I gave you a good enough price, pocket tens. I gave you a good enough price. I don't blame you there. Check raise with pretty nice drawing hand. Pretty shit turn card for us, it fucks all our two pair outs. Disappointing run out all round. Just hope to win against who knows what. I guess some higher flush draws, maybe some. I don't know, 9 8's got there, 8 7's got there. Mm. Maybe just some random nonsense bluffs. I expect to lose to 10x a decent chunk of the time. <laughs> Flackies on the charge again. It could call for but but I don't really want to be getting ace king in pre flop in these games when they're soft enough that we don't need to. Flackies just boom gone for it. Flackies gonna get me but it's gonna get me out of the way. Man down. Right, he has dunked into us here. Pot side dunk bet too. I'm still gonna raise. I hope he gets the fuck out of the way. If he doesn't, it'll be alarming. We're going to stack off against this guy if he does anything. Again, this isn't something you could really do against regulars. You couldn't raise and stack off here, expecting to be good against lots of regulars. But in these games, you, I think it's 
completely acceptable to just like play those situations much more aggressively and quickly for value. <laughs> Let the tens go. So I think what we'll do, just to make sure that we try and maximise these games as many videos as we can, we might just stop this one on 40 minutes and try and get a third one in the in the tube. Check raise that good shot here, given that it should be min bet and call. Milan Mike Milan Michel decides they want a piece of me. The other guy comes along. Run up the trend bluff two plays with fish tags on this board. Once they both call our flop bet and this turn comes, they're just gonna give up and hope to get a free one or a cheap one. Spike a nine ball. We do not do either of them. Well, we get the free one, but we don't spike the nine. Uh, given that he'd give the whole I have to see spiel earlier, um, we're not going to try and bluff somebody who has to see. So, yeah, we're going to call it a day on this video, and we'll be back with the. Well, I don't know when I'm going to release all these, but we're back probably space them one or two days apart. Bye for now.